Now, weather is a topic that uh, causes a lot of people a lot of heartache. And if you break it down into some simple parts and just have a basic understanding of the principles and theories that underlie the weather, then uh, it makes it a lot easier. So we're going to do that in these next series of videos. Uh, we're going to be talking about the atmosphere, uh, the makeup of the atmosphere, and that'll give you the basic underlying uh, principles that will help you understand the weather and help you be able to uh, make good go, no-go weather decisions. Uh, we're going to talk about the different types of weather reports that uh, you can get to help you out and do that, different types of forecasts, and the difference between the reports and the forecasts, uh, in-flight in weather advisories that uh, you can get that will help you out figure uh, figure what's going on out there, and different weather charts that are put out that uh, also depict what kind of weather you have out there. The weather is a huge determining factor in the safety of any given flight. And you need to be able to understand the weather and be able to incorporate it into your decisions to either fly or not fly, or go or no go. Uh, you want to combine the weather and the weather conditions, uh, not only where you're flying from, but the area where you're flying through and the area where you're flying to. So where to look to find all that information, and then to how to incorporate that and, and interpret it into means to you uh, as a pilot and your route of flight. Now the other things that you want you're obviously going to consider are your personal capabilities as a pilot and also the capabilities of the airplane. So the weather conditions that may mean a no-go for a particular pilot or a particular airplane may not for a different pilot or a different airplane. So there's a little bit of personal judgment here where you need to incorporate your personal skills and your aircraft into the information that you're getting on the weather and again make a competent good safe go no go decision or at least recognize what risk management techniques you can incorporate to negate the effects of the weather or to reduce the effects of the weather and make it a safe flight. Now one thing you always want to do is get a weather brief and one of the easiest ways to do that is by calling 1-800-WXBRIE F. That's very easy to remember. 1-800-WEATHER-BRIEF. W-X-BRIEF. So that's 1-800-99. So if you want to make it uh, a little more difficult, you can remember the phone that what that phone number is. And so that's 1-800-992-7433. I like just to remember weather brief or WX brief, 1-800-WEATHER brief. What you get when you call that number is somebody on the other end who's going to be able to talk to you uh, very specifically about aviation weather and give you all the information that uh, you could possibly want. All you have to do is let them know that you're a pilot, you're planning a flight uh, from a certain location to a certain location uh, at a certain time, and you'll be able to get some very specific information from them. Now, as a powered parachute, pilot, one of the most important things that you know, you're going to be looking at is the winds. So you want to be able to, whether you use 1-800 Weather Brief or some of the other websites, you want to be able to take a look and see what the current winds are and see what the winds are going to be during the duration of your flight. Gusting winds make a bigger difference to a powered parachute than steady winds. So you can usually take a little bit of a more of a steady wind over a gusting wind. You have to take your personal skills into account. Gusts of uh, two to three knots uh, may affect one person uh, but not affect another person. And then you also, like we said before, need to take into account you, the configuration of your aircraft. So, you know, do you have a square wing or an elliptical wing? Because uh, they were going to react differently in different types of winds. You also want to be very cognizant of the density altitude. Now, we talked a bit about density altitude in aerodynamics. We talked about it in aircraft performance. And we're going to be talking about it again here in these weather sections. Um, the density altitude is extremely important. And the factors that go into that, the three H's, the high, hot, and humid, you want to be able to understand how these, how temperature, how altitude and how humidity may be changing during your flight 
and changing from location to location that you're flying from and to because that's going to affect your density altitude which greatly affects your aircraft performance. So that directly applies in maybe you took a flight early in the morning where it was nice and cool and you've got some trees that you need to uh, clear just off the end of your runway or trees or maybe power lines. Well when it's nice and cool the density altitude is low and you have good performance but when the temperature increases during the uh, you know in the in the few hours in the morning time and you go out there in the middle of the afternoon maybe the temperature rose uh, 30 degrees and the humidity rose 20 percent and now your density altitude is much higher so it your engine and your wing have that much less performance and now maybe you have a heck of a time getting over those getting over those obstacles at the end of your runway so it's something that you need to constantly be aware of and keep uh, keep mind mindful about now you also want to be able to understand how clouds cloud systems weather systems have an effect on cloud clearances and visibility now if you remember back to the uh, rules and regulations tutorials we're required to have at least three statute miles visibility as a sport pilot so we need to be able to pick up on the things that are going to affect that now fog when does fog form and what uh, what are the things that contribute to it uh, how do we determine what the visibility is at a given station what are the cloud layers and are we going to be able to maintain safe altitudes and the clearance to clouds requirements that we're required to maintain as a sport pilot. Now these are things that are all going to be covered in these weather tutorials and it's just one part of your your total go no go decision. It's the weather section. The big take home here is you need to be competent enough with understanding the weather to make a good go no go decision. You need to be able to combine your capabilities as a pilot the capabilities of your aircraft and the limitations that the weather and the different weather situations that you're, you're going to run into you need to combine all those three things and make competent go-no-go -no -go decisions as to whether or not you're going to fly or incorporate appropriate risk management uh, techniques uh, when you do run into uh, weather issues uh, so that you can safely fly.